Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is apply a facing operation to our very first project. So I already have the part loaded and the datum's in the right location, so let's get started. We're going to head over to the left hand side of the screen, and within the CAM category, I'm going to left click on Stock Tool Paths. We're going to come over here, and we're going to find the facing operation, which is right here, and I'm going to left hand mouse click on that. As soon as I do that, my cursor changes to the word bound. That means it's looking for a closed boundary. So I can left click anywhere on this boundary that I'd like. And once you've selected it, it will turn red. And when you're done selecting, simply just hit the right hand mouse button. When you hit the right hand mouse button, that tells 1CNC that you're done selecting. Now, the very first dialog box that pops up is the Select Tool dialog box. Now, you can manually define a tool if you'd like, or you can select a tool from the tool library. It's really up to you. In this example, though, I'm going to show you how you can manually define a tool. First, I'm going to come down to Tool Type, and I'm going to just click on this little arrow here. And these are all the different tool types you can select from. I'm going to go with an end mill, so I'll select that. The length is just how far past the tool sticks out of the holder. I'm going to change that to 2 inches, and as soon as I type 2 in, you can see the graphics update up here. I'm going to change the diameter to 1 inch, and again, you can see the graphics update up here. Tool number, that's your turret position. I have one in here, which means that's going to be turret position number one, and that's going to output something like T1M6 within the CNC code. Okay, so here's your spindle speed, and here's your two different feed rates. You can have one CNC calculate the spindle speed and feed rates automatically, but in this example, I'm going to just type things in uh, by uh, just manually here. So I'm going to type in how about 2400 RPM for the spindle speed. Two feed rates. This first feed rate is your XY feed rate. The second feed rate is your plunge feed rate. This means any move that, re, uh, that includes a Z move is called a plunge. So in one CNC, you have two different feed rates, X and Y, and a Z move. All right, if you type in something for your XY feed rate, by default, one CNC automatically divides that by two, and that's how you get your plunge feed rate. But you can always come back in here and type anything that you'd like. All this looks good, so I'm going to click Next. Here's our clearances dialog box. This is where we set all of our clearances up. Uh, the start and finish clearance, we don't need to worry about this because this typically is for 4 and 5 axis, so we're going to leave this alone. And by default, it's unchecked. Uh, you've got your rapid Z-plane. This is where your tool is going to wrap it across if we had multiple parts and so on. Uh, and in this case, we're going to use this as a rapid Z-plane. And this has to be a safe value, so I have a half inch. And you can see it's designated in red here. All right, so our plunge clearance, this is where the tool is going to start to feed down. So I have 50 thousandths for that. The top of my material is zero, and you can see everything's nicely laid out graphically here within one CNC. Material top zero, and my final Z depth is going to be zero as well. If I wanted to take multiple depths of cut, I could just simply click on this and then type in whatever cut increment I want to use. But in this example, I'm just going to cut this at one level, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. All that looks good, so I'm going to click Next. So here's all the different parameters for facing. This approach distance is how far off the geometry we're going to start. I don't want the tool to plunge down right on top of the part. I want it to, to come down away from the boundary. So that's what this is all about, the approach distance. And by default, it's 110% of the tool radius. Now the overlap amount, that's just how far past the boundary the tool is going to go. All right, it's not the step over. It's just how far past the tool is going to go past the boundary. And by default, that's 50% of the tool radius. And of course, you can change these if you'd like. The step over, that is the distance between each pass. And right now, I've got 65% of the tool diameter. If you don't want to use a percentage of the tool diameter, just uncheck this, and then just type in the distance that you'd like. So if I type in a half inch, that means the distance between each one of these passes is going to be a half inch. I'm going to put this though back to auto step over and put that at 65%. Also note too that when you type in different values, 1CNC calculates the decimal equivalent down here within this grayed out area. I'll put this back to 65%. Then you have uh, three different toolpath types. You have spiral, zigzag, and one direction. If you go with one direction, of course, you can change between climb cut and conventional. I'm going to go with just a zigzag. We'll click finish. And there you go. There's our very first machining operation. And as noted before, you can see that the operation is listed within the NC Manager. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.